Welcome to episode 14 of A Journey to Tetelestai. In our last episode, we saw that God gave 10 commandments to show us how we are to relate to Him and relate to others. I call them the laws of a champion. God showed us the way we were created to live. In today's episode, we're going to learn why the laws were given and why they are so important. Arlen gives us an excellent explanation to show us the purpose of the law. So let's listen right now. After examining the Ten Commandments, do you think the Israelites were capable of perfectly obeying them? Though the Israelites had been confident that they could keep all of God's laws, they broke them over and over again. What about you? Have you completely obeyed God's commandments? The truth is, every single person who honestly evaluates their life will have to admit they have broken them. And like the Israelites, many times we have done it over and over again. We have a problem then. Because God is holy, because He is completely pure with nothing evil in Him, God requires absolute obedience to these laws. God does not allow us to pick and choose which laws we want to follow or which laws we think it's okay to break. God commanded His people to keep all of them. Galatians 3.10 says, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. What gives eternal magnitude to these commandments is the fact that in Hebrews 9.27, God says, Man is destined to die once. Rich or poor, educated or not, good or bad, no one escapes death. Every person is destined to die and after that, to face judgment. After death, God will judge every single person. And according to Revelation 20, verse 12, the actions of every single person are recorded by God in His books. Can you imagine? Every single careless word that you have spoken, everything that your hands have done, every place that your feet have gone, all the hidden secrets that you thought no one knew about, God recorded them. And He will judge every single one of these actions. Maybe you're thinking, Arlen, no one would be able to survive a judgment like that. If God already knew that we wouldn't be able to obey His laws, why in the world did He give them to us? In Romans chapter 3, verse 20, God explains, through the law, we become conscious of sin. The reason that God gave us the Ten Commandments was so that we would realize we are sinners. Because sin is anything that goes against the perfect character of God. This means that any of your actions or any word you say or any thought you have that is against God's perfect character is sin. When God gave the Israelites the Ten Commandments, He already knew that they were sinners. It was the people who didn't realize how sinful their lives were. So God gave them His holy laws to function like a mirror, to show the people their own sinfulness. 
For example, someone could have a dirty face and not even realize it. But if he looked into a mirror, he would see himself and realize just how dirty his face really was. And God knew that in our own pride, we'd be just like that person with dirt all over his face, not realizing how sinful our own lives really are. But when we honestly look at God's perfect laws, they function just like a mirror. The law shows us how far our own lives are from the perfect character of God. God's character is holy, which means He is pure and there is nothing evil in Him. But when we look at the law, we realize we are not holy and our own lives are full of evil. The law was given so that we would realize we are sinners. Galatians 3.24 says that God also gave the law in order to lead people to the coming deliverer. God knew that if the people could recognize the fact that they were sinners, they would realize that they needed someone to rescue them from their sins. The deliverer would be the only one who would be able to perfectly obey God's laws. His life would be completely pure with nothing evil in Him. He would be the only one who would be able to resolve the problem of their sins. And God knew, in order for the people to realize their only hope was in the coming Deliverer, they needed the law. Thank you so much, Arlen, for sharing this great truth. <laughs> I could really identify with what Arlen said about having dirt on your face and not seeing it until you look into a mirror. Then you see the stain of the food. I have to be honest with you. There have been a number of times when I've eaten in a restaurant and my wife has quietly given me a look and scratched her face. I knew I had something on my face. She cared so much about me that she didn't want me to be embarrassed. I'm so grateful for her kindness. One of the life attitudes that keep us from living to our full potential is that we think we are champions. My attitude for a long time was, I can do it. I'm a good person. I'm a true champion. Many people think that's a great attitude to have. But when we're honest, it's only a delusion. I can't live up to the standard that God has set because He is absolute purity. What the Bible calls holiness. It is out of God's love and kindness that He shows us that we cannot run like champions. We can't live to His standards. He gives us a mirror, His commandments to expose our faults, our sins, our failures. He wants us to live like champions, but it's impossible. When we become completely honest, we'll confess, Oh God, I failed you. I've lived far below the standard you set for me. Failure to live up to God's standard is the truth about my life. And it's the truth about yours. It's true about all humanity. It's when I came to grips with this great truth that I began to learn to live like a champion. Before I came to know God in a very personal way, I thought that I was doing pretty good in life. I was involved socially and politically. I was president of the East Baton Rouge Parish Youth Council, president of the Baton Rouge Junior Rotarians, president of our drama club at school. I had two scholarships to study at Louisiana State University. I thought, I'm a good person. Look at all the good things I'm doing. But there was darkness deep in my heart. No one else knew about it, yet God did. He knows everything about us. He knows our thoughts. He knows our feelings. He knows our secrets. On the outside, I looked like a champion, but on the inside, I knew I wasn't. I felt trapped. I wanted to keep the appearance of being a champion, but it only produced more darkness. 
During my first year at the university, I listened to a man speak about the one true champion of life. When I saw the one who is the champion of all champions, the one who has lived up to God's standard, the only one, my heart melted. I could no longer put on a false face. I saw myself in the mirror of God's word and I desperately needed cleansing. The commandments of God exposed me. They did so much more than that. They showed me my need of a savior. They pointed me to the one true champion, the one who cried tetelestai on a cruel Roman cross more than 2,000 years ago. I embraced him by faith. I said, I can't. And he said, I can. I said, I need you. He said, I love you. I said, I've lost my way. And he said, I am the way. I said, all these years, I've deceived myself. He said, for eternity, I am the truth. I said, I want to die. He said, I will give you life. My life has never been the same since I met the Savior. I found life. I found the true champion of life, the one who is absolute holiness. And he not only loves me, but he also loves you.